Hello, we're glad that you've chosen to join us here at Temple Baptist Church in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. I'm going to share a story with you today that we find in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14. I hear people say occasionally that Jesus is the only one who ever walked on the water. I understand what they're saying, uh, but really that's not a correct statement. Uh, not only did Jesus walk on the water, but the Apostle Peter also, for uh, a few moments, uh, walked on the water as well. And this is the story of Peter having entrusted his faith into the Lord and walking on the water. Listen to what it says, Matthew chapter 14. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. The boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. I think that's a pretty common human action. Uh, if we were to see somebody like that, we perhaps would be troubled as well. And they said, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. There are those two words, the reaction of humanity, the reaction of our flesh, is that they were troubled and, and they were afraid. There are many people today, uh, as we go through what we're going through as a world, uh, that are troubled and they are afraid. And so what a good lesson for us that this is for us today. It goes on to say there, but immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So Jesus said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Yes, Peter, for that moment, walked on the water as well. He had his eyes on Jesus. He was being obedient to the call of Jesus to come. And so the Bible says then in the very next verse, but... Isn't that the way it is with our humanity, with our flesh? Here we are one moment walking on the water, being obedient to come when Jesus calls us to come. And the next moment, there's that but clause. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid again. When he put his eyes on Jesus, there was no fear. He got out of that boat and stepped on that water. But then he was distracted again by the things of the world what a distraction we have around us today. Distractions from placing our eyes on Jesus will always cause us fear, as it did in the disciples in this story. It says, when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, and he began to sink, and he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. I'm so glad that Peter knew what to do when he was afraid. I'm so glad Peter knew what to do when he had been distracted momentarily by the winds and the waves and the storms that caused him fear that was all around him. The wind and the waves, when he looked at them, were no worse than they had been before. But the difference was that when he took his eyes off Jesus, he became afraid. And when he became afraid, the Bible says, he began to sink but he caught himself quickly and he cried out to the only one who was able to allay his fears. And so the Bible says he cried out to the Lord and notice, and immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. Peter knew where to turn when he was afraid and he cried out to the only one who could still the waves and the distractions. There are going to be distractions in this world. Those distractions, if we focus our attention on them, will absolutely cause us fear. I'm not saying that we shouldn't keep ourselves abreast of the situation, but I think that we can have too steady a diet of the negative. We might even say too uh, steady of a diet of the reality around us because the greater reality is that God is God. He loves us, he sent Jesus. And when we take our eyes off him, we will grow afraid. And when we get afraid, we'll start sinking, sinking in the well-being of our mind and our hearts, sinking in, in, in talking negatively as opposed to positively, uh, sinking and thinking the positive things of God instead of the negative things of the world. And so may we look to Jesus, cry out to him, and watch as he immediately reaches out for us, catches us, 
that we might refocus our eyes upon the Lord and that we might take heart and be filled with courage. He says, do not be afraid. The only way that's possible is as we keep our focus upon Jesus, upon God's word, as we continue to have a fellowship with him daily through prayer. And so, brothers and sisters, friends from all over, may I encourage you, keep your eyes on Jesus. He's the only one that can calm the storm, the only one that in the midst of the storm can keep us safe as we focus upon him. Let's pray. Lord, there are so many things vying for our attention, trying to distract us, trying to scare us. And Lord, if we take our eyes off you, then we will begin to sink. And so Lord, help us to focus wholly upon you by spending time in your word and in prayer. And Lord, when we fail at that, help us quickly to cry out to you as the source of our help. And Lord, immediately you will reach and you will pick us up. Thank you for loving us that much. And Lord, may someone know anew or afresh that love in their lives today. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.